the year 2020 for anime was all about shows coming back after long hiatuses, remakes or pseudo remakes of classics, as well as showing us how to end a popular series and how not to end a popular series. I'm Wade Willis and I'm going to give you guys my top 10 anime of 2020. Before I get into this list, I have to give you guys my criteria for what makes something eligible. First of all, to be on this list, it has to be a TV show. So movies are not eligible. Or else, Heaven's Feel Part 3 would have been on the top of my list for sure. Second, I have to have seen the show. So some of your favorites may not be on the list for that reason. Or they may not be on it because I thought it sucked. And third, a season's worth of episodes need to have aired in 2020. So the final Attack on Titan season is eliminated. And guys, make sure you subscribe to my channel for tons of anime content and leave a like. And let me know your guys' top 10 in the comments below. I'd love to see what you guys picked. Now without further ado, my top 10 anime of 2020. And starting off the list at number 10, we have Higurashi Go. Higurashi is a horror mystery masterpiece that takes place in small town Japan. Nothing is as it seems in this town. This season was expected to be a remake of the original classic Higurashi. They have designed this season so far so that people new to the series and veterans of the series can both enjoy it. They have been speedrunning arcs and world building at an incredible pace and have been balancing making it enjoyable and surprising to both new fans and old fans at the highest level possible. We're about halfway through the season and it looks like things are about to get even better. But I have to judge this on the first half of the season and that's why this is at number 10 and not higher. I have spent more time covering this series than any other series on my channel this year. And I have it at number 10. So that goes to show you how amazing these other shows are above Higurashi in this top 10 list. Speeding in at number 9, we have Akudama Drive, a dystopian story that takes place in future Kansai. And when I read that the creator's influences for this story were Blade Runner and Quentin Tarantino movies, I was 100% in on watching this. On the surface, this is a story that follows an innocent girl who is thrust into the life of an Akudama, or a criminal in this society. It starts off as a high story, then develops into so much more. The animation is vibrant, over the top, and breathtaking. The world and characters kept me sucked into the story. Is this story a masterpiece? No, but it's pretty damn good. And I was on the edge of my seat for most of the story. I would suggest this to anyone. At number 8 we have the darling of the limited slate of summer anime shows this year, Rent a Girlfriend. This show gave us the clear cut winner of Best Girl for 2020, which is obviously Ruka-chan. Yeah, I said it. Alright, my opinion of Mizuhara is extremely biased and it's because I do stand up comedy in LA and because of this I'm around actresses all the time in LA and it's led me to feel like the last girl in the world I would want to date is a girl aspiring to be an actress. And guys, regardless of what kind of girl you like, there is a girl that is for you in this show. Rent a Girlfriend did an amazing job of keeping things fun while adding in enough drama to keep you hooked. I'm expecting big things from the show in the future, but right now the overall story is a bit lacking compared to the rest of the shows further along in this ranking. Number 7, ReZero Season 2 Part 1. I was already a huge fan of ReZero after the first season, and after waiting for years, we finally got a season 2. Well, half of it. But the second half is coming really soon, guys. For those of you unaware of what ReZero is, it's an isekai where the main protagonist is given the power to go back in time. Well, it's not quite that easy. He has to die in order to go back into time, and basically it's back into a save point. He can't just choose wherever it is. Season 2 built on the amazing foundation that Season 1 left off on. They built up the world and characters so much more while introducing new important characters flawlessly. This season made me an emotional wreck multiple times and seriously I cannot wait for season 2 part 2. And guys they introduce Akina in this season and she's bringing the kink on strange levels. Number 6 Jujutsu Kaisen This show is hyped up as the next big thing from Shonen Jump. And you know what? It has totally delivered so far. 
The only other show that was hyped up this year as much as Jujutsu Kaisen was The God of High School, which is also a MAPPA show. And yes, The God of High School had amazing animation, which Jujutsu Kaisen also has. But where like, The God of High School fell flat on its face, Jujutsu Kaisen excels. The world building, character building, and the story pacing is masterful. Not to mention this show's ability to balance drama and comedy in a way I thought was unattainable. Everyone has been hyping up this show, so I don't know why you haven't started it yet, but get on it ASAP. Dancing in at number 5, we have Kaguya-sama Love is War Season 2. To be completely honest, I had incredibly low expectations for Season 2. Believe me, I loved Season 1, but I thought the plot and comedy from Season 1 would get old and tired with a whole other season rehashing everything. But this show took the story and development of characters to a whole other level, guys. Even side characters got development that made your hearts break for them and root for them to finally obtain happiness. This show is an absolute masterpiece, and I was so pumped when I heard that season 3 was coming that I had to record my own version of the Chica dance. And guys, I know you're thinking, wow, how is someone even cuter than Chica doing this dance? I know, it's a lot I have to deal with being uh, so attractive as Chica, and really fighting off the paparazzi uh, is a bit difficult, so I can't go out as Chica very often. Guys, start the show if you haven't started it already. It's freaking hilarious, and the story's just really fun to watch. Number four, my teen romantic comedy, season three the long-awaited final season to a beloved light novel series. One of the hardest things for popular shows to do correctly is ending a series well, or the Gairu, which created one of the greatest love triangles of all time. Or I guess it would be a square if you included Aroha. I guess you can't forget Sensei too. Oh shoot, and Saika for you cultured fans. Guys, let's just say there was a main love triangle and some other potential love interests, but that triangle really created something special. Anyways, whether you were for Team Yui or Team Yukino, the story ended in a way that somehow satisfied everyone, even if it broke our hearts. Not to mention, this season had one of the greatest rap battles of all time. <laughs> If you're newer to anime and haven't heard of this series, I suggest starting season one right now. You will not be disappointed. At number three, we have Is It Wrong to Try to Pick Up Girls in a Dungeon? Season three, also known as Don Machi. I did not expect season three to be so damn good. I was a fan of the series, but this season took a turn for the better. To me, the first two seasons were fairly lighthearted, with a normal drama, romance, and comedy you would expect from a well-written fantasy anime. This season, however, sucked me in right from the start with the introduction of the Xenos, monsters with intelligence, who are really more human than monster mentally, but still look like a monster. In a world that is scared of monsters, where adventurers make their living hunting them, this addition changes everything in the world and the twists in this season are truly shocking. Plus, Wiene is the cutest damn thing ever. Just look at her. Listen guys, as long as you don't hate fantasy anime, you should watch this show, and season three will knock you off your seat. At number two, I have a certain scientific railgun, T, aka the third season of the Railgun spinoff. A certain scientific railgun is a spinoff of the Index light novel series, one of the top three selling light novels of all time. This world is ruled by two separate ideologies, the magical side where you follow Kamijo Toma, a high schooler who has the ability to cancel out magic and science attacks with his right hand, and the science side where you follow Misaka Mikoto, level five railgun, AKA Alolan Raichu. It is up for debate as to what is actually the best way to get into this Toaru world via anime. Personally, I would suggest starting with the first two seasons of Railgun before going into the Index side. One, I feel like Railgun is adapted better than Index, and we're going to get more people into this world that way. And two, I feel like the payoff for the plot in Season 2 of Railgun is a lot better if you don't watch Index first. This show is not only incredibly entertaining, but also has some of the best characters in anime, period.
On top of all the positives I already mentioned, Railgun also tackles deep philosophical and ethical dilemmas such as human experimentation, cloning, and brainwashing in a way that is not only easy to follow but is also engaging, a difficult feat for sure. Railgun T is a straight up banger. And finally, my number one pick for 2020, Fruits Basket Season 2. This is a remake of the beloved Studio Dean classic. One of my good friends kept telling me to watch this show and I was very hesitant at first. A story about an orphan girl who befriends three boys of the Soma family and learns that 12 members of this family are possessed by animals of the Zodiac. If they are embraced by someone of the opposite sex, they turn into the animal they are possessed by. Yeah, that did not sell me. But as I got through season one, I started getting really attached to these characters. And season two took this attachment and pushed it into freaking overdrive. Fruits Basket awakened emotions in me that I thought were gone for good after this year of isolation. This season put me through a roller coaster of emotions while making me think deeply about mental health, something this story does better than almost anything I've ever seen. Fruits Basket is very deserving of this top spot, and I'm really disappointed it didn't get as much hype as it really deserves. Well, that's my list everyone. Don't forget to let me know your top 10 in the comments below. I wanted to take this time to thank everyone for the love and support in this first year of my channel. It has grown a lot this year, and I couldn't have done it without you guys. I will continue working to improve to make this channel even better in 2021. Thanks everyone.